having uh, one great idea is good. Uh, having that one great idea sync up with uh, various company needs, company desires, company goals around employee attraction, retention, revenue generation, social good, and of course, reducing one's environmental footprint. That's a trick. To talk about that, please welcome the Chief Revenue Officer from Solar City, Hayes Barnard. So imagine a world, a world with hungry children, children that are driven and yearning for opportunity, a world with teachers that are hungry to teach, and in this world, there's an abundance amount of one of our planet's largest energy sources, sunlight. Yet, in this world, these people don't have the ability or the technology to harness sunlight to provide themselves something as simple as light. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. On this planet today, there are 1.4 billion people, almost 20% of the people in the world that don't have access to electricity, to light. I want to tell you a little bit about our foundation at Solar City, what we're doing, and then hopefully I'll leave you and I'll spark you with an idea of how I think this foundation will help you scale and grow your business and bring more meaning into your own life. So the first thing I want to do is I want to back up and think about what are the things that attract top talent to join your organization? I think it's really insightful. Many of us are, are working in organizations that are growing very, very quickly. They're innovative technologies, and I'm convinced in today's market, it's a talent competition. Winners have options, and you have to get the best to come work for you. And in my mind, I'm currently hiring over 450 people a month inside my organization. I think these are the four things that drive the extraordinary, the super talents. The first thing is gratitude. Top talent wants to be in an environment where people are grateful. They're grateful for their efforts, their sacrifices, the gifts that they have and what they bring into an organization. A small thank you goes a long way. And the mindset of a grateful perspective within the organization is what attracts top people to join your organization. The second thing is growth. People want to be a part of something big, something exciting. An organization is growing very, very quickly. At Solar City, we've grown at over 100% for seven years in a row. We plan to do it again this year in 2015. And so, you know, people are driven by mastery. They're the same people that want to go home and they, they want to learn an instrument at night or a new language. They're driven by learning and they yearn for growth in their lives. The next piece is meaning. Now, many companies do a good job of this. I happen to own a mortgage company as well, and, uh, and, and the mindset is, how do we put people into new homes? We're passionate about how someone gets their very first home, or how we save them enough money on a refinance so they can, uh, they, 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 they can get an education or something for their children. At insurance companies, they do a great job of this too. We're going to protect your lives, and the employees are fired up, and they run through walls to help people, and they're just selling insurance. At Solar City, we do this through clean energy. We say, hey, we're, we're going to sell solar to residential homeowners and, and, and commercial building owners. And what we're going to do is we're going to form a, a greater uh, uh, type of energy for the planet, a cleaner, more affordable energy. And you guys have seen this riddled through many organizations. The last piece is the piece I want to talk to you guys about today. I think this is the piece that many, many companies are missing. And this piece is impact. Now, I know many of you are sustainability managers for other organizations. You're the stewards of, of environmental ship within your organizations. But this piece is a little bit of a different twist. The concept here was I'm the chief revenue officer of Solar City, and I'm also the president of a foundation we started just over a year ago, a foundation called Give Power. And let me tell you a little bit about Give Power. Give Power is on a mission to help those 1.4 billion people. Give Power wants to help the 20% of people in the world that don't have access to electricity. And what we did was we came up with a very transparent ratio. You've, you've seen this done before. Basically what we said was for every megawatt of energy 
that we sell here in the United States of America residentially, we're going to put solar on a school in a third world country. So what we've done in the last year is we did just over 500 schools in our very first year. We plan to double that this year in 2015. And we put solar on schools in Haiti, Nicaragua, Mali, Malawi, Kenya, all over the world. And we brought light to these light, light little faces of children that now have an opportunity to study into the evenings and into the afternoons. We gave light for these schools along with lights and, and a storage system so that um, the elders would have an opportunity to learn during the evenings as well and really accelerate the learning curve inside of these villages. Now what's interesting about it is with this one-to-one -one ratio, we made it very transparent and aware to every employee, every partner, every customer exactly what we were doing. And we communicated that on a regular basis. What it allowed us to do is inspire some of our partners. We partnered with an organization called Build On. Build On built about 500 schools over the last few years. And so we're outfitting all their schools with solar. Some of our customers that are large technology customers in the Silicon Valley um, were inspired and they said we want to provide computers for those children inside of those schools and we recently did that in Kenya. So it allowed us to get much more aligned with our partners, much more aligned with um, our customers. At the same time, every single one of our sales professionals that goes on a call, it's top of mind and that's in the presentation, reminding them every single day of the goodness and what we bring. Now what's interesting is that I'm convinced the extraordinary, the exceptional talent needs this impact component. And I call it the fulfillment factor. To me, there are two masteries of living a fulfilled life, living a life um, uh, and being genuinely happy. One is the science of achievement. Many of you have dominated in this category. You got in a good school, you got in a better school. You got a good education, you got a better education. You got a good job, you got a better job. You got a good house, you got a better house. You, you dominated a sales target. You crushed a number. You broke a record. You'll break it again this year. It's who you are and you, what you've done. But in the extraordinary's heart and in their soul, they're looking for more. They're looking for combining meaning, combining it with impact, with a giving philosophy that really gives them and makes them fulfilled. And the second component is the art of fulfillment. This is where many, many companies fail. This is why either one, you're not attracting the top talent that you want to attract, or you're losing them, and they're going elsewhere within the organizations. When you combine and you mash up the giving element, the impact element, and the, um, the fulfillment factor, with your partners, with your customers, and your employee, you truly can make a massive impact. In one year, we've, we've, we've put everything into it, and I want to emphasize, like, make it one thing. Make it one focused thing for your entire organization within your group. Now, it has to stem from the top down. This is a picture of our CEO, Lyndon Rive, and one of our board members, Ben Vandebunt, and the concept was, we need to commit to it, we need to make it transparent to the employees, and really push here, and here's what we wanted. The extraordinary typically are exhausted. They're getting beaten up on some policy internally into the company. They're reading emails constantly. They're in meetings constantly. Um, they're being harassed by some situation that, that, uh, that the company is involved in at that certain state. And what's really important is you have to pull their mind out. You have to give them that grateful perspective. You've got to constantly remind them of the goodness of their efforts and what they're doing. You see, the moment that employee starts asking themselves why, why do I work here? Why am I part of this? As I said, winners have options. There's lots of other things they can do. They get an offer every other day. Then that's the moment you lose them and they check out. So in order to give them the fulfillment factor that they're looking for, you have to have this impact component inside of each and every single one of your businesses. I'm convinced that in order for companies to flourish and be successful, they have to have this top talent with inside of their businesses. And to get this top talent, there has to be a greater story. I can't emphasize enough the amount of times we've been able to recruit someone really solid into the business or keep them because they went on a trek. And they go on this trek and they install solar uh, in a school in a third world country and they come back and it's transformed their lives. I'm convinced these businesses that we all run are just platforms for transforming lives. And the name of the game is, do you have the ability to go get the best? If you bring in a fulfillment factor, 
if you bring in this, um, this, this impact factor inside of your company, I think you'll all be better off in the future. And that's my one big idea. Thank you. Thanks, Ace. Yeah, appreciate it.